Hey YouTube family, friends, everyone. I'm coming back. I'm looking for stuff on YouTube, y'all. I was looking for somebody else and I ran across this. This is old, but when I ran across it, I stopped and I started reading it. And I was just like, oh no, I've never, I've never seen this, never heard about the young man or nothing, y'all. So I'm one person that haven't heard about it, so maybe a few other people haven't heard about this young man. So I said, let me share it with my YouTube family. Y'all, um, whoever have already subscribed to my channel, thank you, gratitude. If you have not, um, if you ran across any of my videos and you have not subscribed, please subscribe, y'all. Help me build up this channel, please. Yeah, also like and share these videos. And I would greatly appreciate it. Thank y'all very much. Y'all, this young man's name is Terrell Peterson. He was five years old when he passed away. I'm gonna show y'all. I mean, I'm gonna hear, let y'all hear this video. Uh, I'm gonna let y'all hear it. And I'm going to show y'all a picture of the young man. Y'all, this video is so sad. When I tell y'all this is sad, this is sad, y'all. Real sad. And I also want to say, when the state take people kids, some parents do not deserve their children. Some parents don't. If anything will happen to any of my grandkids and my, uh, with any of my grandkids, I would take my grandkids and I mean if anything would happen to one of my kids I would take in my grandkids I would not neglect them I would not abuse them as bad as they are y'all and they are bad but the state takes away people children puts them in custody total strangers and the kids die. Some of them, all of them don't die. Some, um, you know, get molested. Whatever happened, they leave from one bad situation to a worse situation. The bad situation is being at home. At least you know, you know these people. Then they take you from there and put you in. Now I don't. I'm not saying that it's anything wrong with the state taking the kids if they're being mistreated. Yeah, take them. But y'all really don't know these people that y'all putting these kids in their household. Y'all don't know them. Y'all don't know these kids. I mean, y'all don't know these people. And this stuff happened. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids are dying in foster homes, getting molested and raped and you know mistreated still. In foster home, y'all taking them from one situation to, from a bad situation to a worse situation, as I said. But, I'm about to start this video, y'all. I hope y'all can hear it. I really hope y'all can hear it. I got it up. Let me make sure I got it turned up as far as it can go. Hold on. Wait, I think it's Pop quiz. Oh, What's the nope. fastest way to race? Hold on, y'all. I done messed up something. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with is me. It a, pay your bills on time. Something. B, I require. Hold credit. on. Oh, my God. Y'all hold on. Let me go back. Good hold evening, y'all. Okay, here we go. Here we go, y'all. Yeah. Don't even have pictures of him. Just one. okay. So she said they don't have a picture. That just made, reminded me. Let me show y'all the picture that I pulled up for him. This the y'all. They say this the only picture that this boy had when he's five years old. My babies, my kids have pictures from months old till the age they is now but this the 
Can y'all see it? Let's see. Ah. Okay. This is him. The only picture that they've ever taken of this baby. And then and the parents didn't even take this picture, y'all. The uh the they the emergency room people at the hospital. The hospital took that picture of him. I hope y'all was able to see it. But that's the only picture that baby has, y'all. The only picture, and it's so sad. But I'm finna read to y'all. I'm finna, I mean, let y'all hear the video. So, with that being said, viewer discretion is definitely advised for this one. And if you are very squeamish or you don't like hearing details about, you know, a child being, you know, not in a safe place, then please, please, please turn away now. And I implore you That's that just the details said. are very sickening. And it really honestly pissed me off the entire time I was doing it. So, viewer discretion is definitely advised. And uh, if there's any lack of editing, I deeply, humbly apologize. There's not much pictures to go off of this. So, please enjoy no this video this if yeah. you decide to uh, go ahead. And I don't even think you're going to enjoy it, honestly. But thank you for watching. Terrell Peterson was born on March 1st, 1992 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was one of more than 800 children who passed away between the years of 1995 and 1998 after he was brought to the attention of the Georgia Department of Human Services and the Division of Family and Children's Services. Some of those children died due to accidents and illness, but not Terrell. Terrell was born with cocaine in his blood by a mother who was addicted to crack cocaine. He was neglected by his biological mother, who used welfare for herself, including to get crack, locking him in his bedroom without food or water, and leaving Terrell and his two siblings, Tommy, who was six, and Tasha, who was 11, with their severely ill grandmother, who could not physically take care of them. Seven reports were made by concerned neighbors who would be getting knocks at their doors by Terrell and his siblings searching for food. Those reports were handled by 11 different caseworkers and overseen by at least 10 supervisors at the Georgia Department of Children and Family Services. After those complaints and a span of three years, they convinced his mother to give him and his siblings up. He was sent with his siblings to their grandmother named Farina Peterson and her daughter, Terry Lynn Peterson, who lived with her alongside her boyfriend, Calvin Pittman. The issue with this was even though Farina and Terry were related to Terrell's siblings, they were only his half siblings, which meant that Farina and Terry were not blood related to baby Terrell. And according to the DCFS protocol, when a child is taken, they were to be taken to a blood relative. Monthly visits and a caseworker were supposed to be assigned to Terrell while he was in their supervision. And no corporal punishment, including hitting, spanking, screaming, or any abusive behavior was allowed. This did not happen for baby Terrell. He was left unsupervised under Farina's home without an assigned caseworker, and no one made a monthly visit. Within six months of his stay with Farina, the abuse and torture started. On December 3rd, 1996, an eighth complaint Sad. came to the Fulton DCFS, but this time it was not for neglect. It was for physical abuse. This complaint was issued a few days before on Thanksgiving. Terrell's biological mother had him to celebrate the holidays. She noticed bruises and cuts all over his body, and he was sent to Hughes Spalding Hospital. The hospital made the complaint after Terrell's mother told him what she found. When he arrived at the hospital, Atlanta police investigator A.C. Booker was dispatched to the emergency room, where a doctor told her that the child was a victim of long-term physical abuse. He was diagnosed shortly after 
with a condition known as battered child syndrome, a condition given to consistently abused children. Booger wrote during her investigation these words. As I look at little Terrell's body, most of his injuries were old. However, he had marks, scars, and lacerations about his body. His injuries included right forearm and ear badly scarred, mark patterns, buttocks swollen, tender, and red, lower back mark, and left forearm. When Booker questioned the child, he explained that Farina was the one who did this to him, due to him in his own words, urinating in his own clothes. He said he was hit with belts and a white shoe and held up two fingers to show what he meant. That very night, Farina Peterson was arrested with a misdemeanor of reckless misconduct. That's the next the week, man. she appeared in Atlanta Municipal Court to face the charge. Police photographed all of Terrell's injuries, and he was sent to his biological mother with instructions on not to return him to his grandmother. However, this did not go in Terrell's favor. No caseworker came with Terrell or on his behalf to the courtroom to be able to testify against Farina, although Sherelle Elmore was assigned to appear with him present. For that reason, Judge Catherine Malacki dismissed the charge and stated the reason being is that the victim did not appear in court. Unfortunately, the judge does not remember ever handling this case, so she says, and the court transcripts were thrown away. However, the person assigned to prosecute Peterson, Darrell Kimbrough, said that no one else was involved on the case or on behalf of Terrell. He stated that the DFACS should have had him in court or someone should have been there. Absolutely little to no communication between the court and the DCFS. During later investigations by the state of Georgia, Sherelle Elmore created a false report and placed it into Terrell's case file explaining that the judge did not believe Farina was guilty of any abuse when she never appeared to make that judgment and the judge certainly did not make that ruling. The victim was not present. That does not mean Farina was not guilty. This put Terrell in extreme danger. Just one day later, he was back with his grandmother and the child welfare agency closed his case once the charges were dropped. A fatal mistake was made that day. Farina told the welfare caseworker that she did not abuse Terrell and that he was constantly falling and getting into fights with other children in his Head Start class. Less than three weeks later, Terrell was back in the same hospital, Hughes Spalding. Farina told the doctor it was due to him standing on a heating grate a week prior and that she did not bring him to the hospital because she was attempting to treat the wounds herself. A doctor by the name of Randall Alexander, who was the Center of Child Abuse Director at the Morehouse School of Medicine, stated the following. I have a problem with that story. If it's going to be hot, you're going to jump off as fast as you can. A four-year-old is going to get off. It was clear that Farina was lying. Due to Terrell telling the hospital and the police of Farina's abuse and trying to save his own life from her hands, she decided to retaliate and both her and Terry purposely made Terrell stand on the heating grate to punish him. His burns were so bad that he needed to have skin grafts, which is a medical procedure where they take healthy skin from a part of your body and they place it where the injury is located. Terrell was admitted into the hospital and days later had skin taken from one of his hips and placed on his feet. No police were called, no report was made, and no one followed up with Farina's story, including questioning the siblings if they witnessed any abuse, questioning the Head Start teacher to see if he was constantly getting into fights, and especially never questioned Terrell. Farina was believed and he was sent right back into her possession. For one full year after this, Terrell was severely it's abused with belts, telephone cords, shoes. He was starved, tied to a banister with pantyhose, and forced to sleep on a slab of wood. 
on the evening of January 15, 1998, Terrell, yet again, was sent to the same hospital, but this time in cardiac arrest when his Aunt Terry explained that he was feeling tired after she attempted to feed him at around 9 p.m. After numerous efforts to help and revive Terrell, he was pronounced dead 45 minutes after he arrived at 10.55 p.m. Terry could not explain the numerous scars, bruises, and lacerations all over his little body. Immediately after his death, an autopsy was done and showed Terrell had died from severe abuse over a long period of time. At a point of near starvation, he was shrunken down to 29 pounds when a five-year-old child is supposed to weigh between 39 and 40 pounds. Reports to the Child Welfare Agency began shortly after his death that he was force-fed with lacerations on his lips and was dunking headfirst into a toilet. Tasha, his half-sister, said that he was tied up a lot. Farina Peterson, Terry Lynn Peterson, and her boyfriend, Calvin Pittman, were charged with the murder of Terrell, and each were given the sentence of life in prison. There was a note found by police that Farina allegedly wrote, stating the following. Breakfast, he gets a bowl of oatmeal. Lunch, he gets grits. Dinner, he gets grits. His hands are always tied. Mm -hmm. However, the story does not stop here. Numerous chances the state of Georgia were given to save him from the environment that he was in. Georgia DFCS did two internal investigations into Terrell's case and reported that Fulton County failed to make contact with Peterson, failed to conduct the monthly visits needed, and extreme lapse in judgment. They concluded there were numerous violations throughout his entire five-year history. Ralph Mitchell, the administrator of the Atlanta area office claimed that he was outraged at the loss of Precious' life. He further continued to claim that the department followed all protocols needed. Now let's take it back here. Protocol of the Fulton and Georgia DFCS and DCFS has always stated monthly visits, no abusive contact by the foster parent, and a person was supposed to be assigned to supervise the child. None of that was done for Terrell. Mitchell wrote a private memo shortly after claiming the findings were untrue and commented how fortunate he felt that no one in the media had called to follow up after his public statement. Due to the state of Georgia privacy laws, Terrell's case was sealed and was not permitted to be accessed by the media. For one full year after his death, no one knew exactly what happened. A lawyer by the name of Don Keenan was determined to sue the state of Georgia and everyone responsible with the supervision of Terrell. He received a shocking surprise when he got a file, specifically Terrell's entire case file, given anonymously by a person who worked within the department. Whoever had done this, must have carried a significant amount of weight, possible regret, and could not handle the guilt of what happened to Terrell. The complicity of his murder was through willing full neglect of the Georgia DCFS. Mm -hmm. And now with Terrell's file exposed, another caseworker was determined to make sure that Terrell's half-siblings, Tasha and Tommy, were to be safe from another family member by the name of Fran Peterson, who allegedly also harmed the children. The unidentified caseworker stated this, Miss Peterson will cooperate with the agency and continue to show interest in the support of the child while they're at home. I think again, you'd have to look at the individual situation and if she had not harmed those children, then it might have been acceptable. It took a murder of their half siblings for someone to care enough to make sure the rest of the Peterson family were not abusive like Farina and Terry with the help of her boyfriend, Calvin. After the program aired and sparked attention, the governor at the time, Rory Barnes, decided to set up a child advocate office that would have full authority 
to bypass the state's confidentiality laws and investigate child abuse independently. Terrell's half-siblings were placed with another foster family, and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation conducted several raids on the offices of the DFCS and the DAFCS. The Terrell Peterson Act was passed later, which gave doctors the full authority to take temporary custody of battered and abused children at the hospital without needing the department's approval. At the end of a dirt road in Randolph County, near 170 miles south of Atlanta, Terrell Peterson's little body is this located is a in a small cemetery. Serious. There are two old potted plants that were toppled over near an old tree that hangs over a small patch of red clay. Those are remnant of tributes paid to those buried in the Mitchell Grove Baptist Church Cemetery in Colthburg. Susie Crowell, who is a member of the church, said Terrell had no mourners and no visitors now, to his grave, stating they funeral. just dug a hole and buried him. His tombstone was paid for by his attorneys. Terrell's case is a very devastating failure in both his family and the people who were supposed to help him to live a better life and abuse-free. May Terrell Peterson Rest, Rest in peace and heavenly baby. peace. Okay, y'all, that's, that's the end of the video, but y'all, that's so sad. Um, this baby at five years old, he passed away when he was five. Passed away when he was five years old. This baby never had a chance in life. Never. He was abused from the time he formed inside his mom's womb because she was doing drugs the whole time. She was pregnant with him. And when he came out, still was being abused, wasn't getting treated right for his whole five years. He wasn't raised as like a normal five-year-old would be raised. So uh, this that's just said all the way around for that baby. And y'all, I've never seen people, it's comments in here. It's comments, I was reading some of the comments that the people were saying about this case and about this baby. And it's sad that people really wish dealt up on somebody, but not dealt in a tragic way. They was just saying that they glad that this baby passed away because of the life that he was going through physically, mentally, Physically and mentally, what he was going through, and emotionally, what he was going through, and they just saying that they they glad that um glad that he passed away. I'm gonna see if I can reach out some of the comments that people were saying. Well, of course, they they all just saying what we'll say, you know, as far as um, this baby life. Um, but I, I just ran across that, y'all, and I just thought that I would uh, share it with y'all. It's so sad, Lord. This is sad for this baby. The baby didn't have a mama, a daddy, a grandmother, an auntie, evidently not even an uncle, didn't have cousins. Didn't have nobody. The whole family mistreated those kids. That mama had three kids. Yeah, the mama had three kids. And two of them... Two of them was given to another family member. And one... And this baby was given to the grandmother and the auntie. The, the auntie and her boyfriend was living with the grandmother and the, her other two kids was living with an aunt, another aunt. And I hadn't, I, I guess I didn't, I missed that part that the aunt was even abusing those two. The other aunt was ab abusing the other two babies and I didn't even know that, but it's so sad. But that mom, that, that mother, she should have got her life together. She should have got her life together and gotten all three of her kids back. 
That's that's so sad. Yeah, my grandkids is in there right now. My daughter's kids. They they in there. I was fussing at one early on another video I made earlier. But the other um Araya The um Y'all my bad, that's my granddaughter phone ringing. Get your phone. Somebody call me. Um Yeah, so they uh this baby never had a chance in life. And his sister and brother ended up getting moved to another um to another foster home and the mom she should be feeling it too. Uh, she should be feeling she should be feeling something, I don't know, but her life is not gonna be all well it's it's not anyways all um all peaches and cream but anyway she should be ashamed of herself but anyway y'all just ran across that and i just thought i'd share it with y'all i know i've never seen it and maybe someone who's watching right now has never seen it but it's so sad and thank god this baby is in heaven with god thank god for that but uh yeah, y'all, so I'm going to continue looking for what I was looking for when I ran across this. And I'll be back, you guys, with another video. Y'all, like, share, and subscribe. Thank y'all for the ones who have already subscribed to my channel. And I'd appreciate the ones that will subscribe. So y'all subscribe, share, and like the video. And I'll be back with another video. Yeah. Bye.